If you use Adobe Premiere Pro, you probably know about the software encoding and hardware encoding features during the project export. But what is the use of these two? What happens if I export the same project with hardware encoding and software encoding? Are there any differences in file sizes? Any time difference between these two exports? And also I'm going to answer some common questions including whether a dedicated graphic card is needed to use hardware encoding. Also, which one do I prefer, either software encoding or hardware encoding for my every project export. Not only that, how to quickly refresh the graphic card on your Windows laptop and some more. So don't skip this video, watch till the very end. This video is going to be a fun to experiment these things and also talk about the results at the final part of this video. Here you can see side by side of the same project file that I'm exporting with software encoding and hardware encoding. This project has multiple tracks that include so many elements, multiple clips, I mean video clips, graphics, dynamic links, text, nested clips, music, sound effects and more. This is a long video. I set the in and out points for around 7 minutes. It's like a 50% of the overall project. Also do note that here I'm using the same bitrate. When it comes to the file sizes, it's same no matter what whether it is hardware encoding or software encoding. Now you got the answer for the question. Are there any file differences if we export in software encoding and hardware encoding? No guys, there is no file differences until unless you are messing up like increasing or decreasing the bitrate. I started the time and exported simultaneously on both hardware and software encoding. You can observe here on the screen as well. Meanwhile, I'm going to share the specifications of the laptop that I'm using for this test. This laptop has an Intel Core i7-9750H processor. The maximum TDP it supported is 45 watts for the processor. Coming to the RAM, I'm using 32GB DDR4 that is split into half in each slot. That means 16GB on one slot and another 16GB on another slot. Coming to the graphic card on this laptop, it has NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650. The maximum TDP it is supported is 50 watts. The size of this graphic card is 4GB and it is a GDDR6 type. Now I'm going to answer this question. What is software encoding and hardware encoding? What is the best according to your needs? The main difference between software encoding and hardware encoding in Adobe Premiere Pro is that hardware encoding is faster and more efficient while the software encoding offers more customization options and higher quality. Talking about the exporting speed, we will find in this video. Coming to the customization and options, software encoding offers more customization options than hardware encoding. You can use the VBR2 pass in software encoding that is not available in hardware encoding. If in case you don't know VBR, it is a variable bit rate. If you increase the VBR, the file size also increases. If you decrease it, the file size decreases. And also quality drops you observe here. One more thing you need to note here is to use hardware encoding in Premiere Pro, you will need at least 10 series graphic cards or above. Now, here is one more question, whether the dedicated graphic card is needed to use this hardware encoding or whether the default graphic card that is integrated, I mean that comes with the processor is enough. The answer is yes, you can use an integrated graphic card for hardware encoding export in Adobe Premiere Pro. If it is compatible and you have Premiere Pro 14.2 or newer versions. However, some operations may take longer with an integrated graphic card. So what I suggest is even though you have the integrated graphic card, use the dedicated graphic card on your Windows laptop. That is way better than this. We are almost completing this test. Meanwhile, I'm going to share one more tip here regarding how to refresh graphic card with shortcut keys on your Windows laptop. The keyboard shortcut key to reset a graphic card driver is Windows key plus Shift plus B. After pressing these keys, the computer screen may flicker or go black before returning to normal. Finally, the test is completed. The software encoding took 12 minutes and 10 seconds, whereas the hardware encoding took 9 minutes and 49 seconds. You can see here the time differences of 2 minutes and 21 seconds. This is just half of the project file guys. Now if you add the same time to this almost close to 4 minutes plus you observe the time differences. From this test what we can say is the hardware encoding is faster than the software encoding. Now here comes one more question. What about the quality? 
See guys, you cannot find major differences in terms of quality and it is unnoticeable if you are uploading a video to YouTube. So now one more question, which one I use every time while exporting the project file? Even I have the MacBook also, sometimes I edit videos on this machine as well. The answer to this question is, it depends. If it is a short tutorial video where I'm not at all using many effects, I use hardware encoding which is quicker and faster. For this video also, I use hardware encoding because no fancy effects, just cropping out the videos, adding some text, blah blah blah, these many things. If in case I add a lot of effects to the project like too many layers and a lot of transitions, on that time I use the software encoding even though it takes a lot of time than hardware encoding. Because I noticed a problem while using the hardware encoding especially for big projects like this. Even though the video file is good when it comes to some heavy transitions or graphics it won't render sometimes. It shows a blank screen in the final rendered video. I don't know whether it is the problem with the graphic card or what you say the optimization between the graphic card and the software is not good. So what I suggest is according to my experience if you have the 4000 or 3000 series graphic cards there is no issue you can use hardware encoding even in macbooks m series chipsets also you can use hardware encoding. If in case you are using still 1000 series like me you need to check the final video output right after exporting if any problems occurs again you need to export but with software encoding even though after finding out so many problems if you again export with the hardware encoding the same problems will come again and again so that's why i'm saying sometimes errors will come if it is a huge project with a lot of layers and transitions on the other hand if you're running out of time and want to export the file faster hardware encoding is the best choice for you especially for YouTube. Have you ever thought RAM is going to be a deciding factor for exporting videos faster? I do have the same question that is why I made it this video where I exported the same project file with different RAM capacities on the same laptop. This is the another video where I tested whether the cooler boosters that are available on the market help export the videos faster by cooling down the laptop temperature. You can click any of these two videos and it's fun to watch these experimental things.